Hi, welcome to another How To by myself, Rob Allen. Today we're going to discuss converting a conventional gun with a conventional muzzle to that of a roller muzzle. Hope you enjoy. Let's start with the muzzle end first. Unclip the spear, remove it, and you will see there's a screw holding the muzzle in place. Star screwdriver, unscrew that self-tapper, it's a blackened stainless steel screw, pull that muzzle off. Once you've removed that muzzle, you can then simply slide the roller muzzle in place. These holes will line up in our barrels, may not line up in other barrels. On the handle side, there's two screws, one this side, one that side. Remove them, drill out that hole, at four millimeter. The shaft that goes through there, this threaded bar, is, four, is just under four millimeter. That will slot through and you have a head that then screws on. This becomes your rubber anchor on the handle end. This is what it looks like once inserted and screwed into place. Two strong stainless steel caps both fitted to the end of that threaded bar. This is much stronger than trying to use a washer together with a self-tapper. I wouldn't rely on that. We have had incidences where guys have tried that. It's broken away and can cause quite a lot of damage to your fingers when loading. For the rubbers, Revert to the previous videos we did where we showed how to cut rubber to length and how to test it. Once your rubbers are cut to length, you'll need to fit these small loops on the end. To make that, we use a wishbone bead, a piece of Dyneema about that long, and we tie a knot and pull it through. Be careful these are not too long. If you make them too long, they can jump off the stainless steel mushroom anchor. Always set them up once tied in that there's just sufficient loop to pass over it. If you do happen to make these too long, you can slide a small piece of rubber over that and that acts as a lock. So, to make these loops, we need a length of Dyneema, wishbone bead, and in this case I'm using a piece of braid. You can use strong cotton or bent trace wire. The normal beads are about 1.9 mil hole, whereas we're going to need to drill that out to fit the double Dyneema. This is about 3.5 that we've drilled it to. The way to get the Dyneema through, fold it in half, thread your cotton or your bent wire trace, feed that through, pull it into position. Easy as that. Keep the bead in position and tie a knot. We found the easiest knot is just a simple granny knot. Any other knot becomes too large. Tension that as best you can by putting a lot of load on it. We anchor that end and this end into a pneumatic machine which we haul about 150 kilos. A single side of the rubber is probably 30 kilos max, so 150 is more than adequate. Then I'd cut these, leaving them about 4 or 5 mils long. The bead is then the right shape and position to push into the rubber with the wishbone applicator. On the other end, you'll need to join the bands either with a more complex wishbone with a handle or just simply fit a standard wishbone. If you're using a gun longer than a 1-1, I would suggest going this route and simply load with a load assist. This makes life a lot easier. The smaller wishbone Correction, the more complex wishbone is this guy here with a handle that does work quite easily on uh, the shorter guns but very difficult on the longer guns. 
In order to make these more complex wishbones, you'll need to use a larger bead. That's the smaller version we make, fine for single Dyneema. This is the bigger version. Through that we're going to fit three lengths of Dyneema. The hole needs to be enlarged, this time we go to about 3.8. You'll need two lengths, roughly 30 centimeters long, and another one about 38 centimeters long. This one will be for your handle. Again, we pull these through the bead by using cotton or stainless steel fishing cable. Once your bead is in position, you'll need to tie a single knot. Just like we did with the looped end, but don't pull it tight. You then take the longer piece, thread that through, then tension up this one. That holds that one in position. Now using the loose one, throw two loops. Single, second, pass the tag end through the two loops. You now tension this up and it creates a double knot that locks onto it. I'll undo that one and redo it. So we start by a single granny knot on the two shorter lengths. We then take this tag end of the handle piece, wrap it twice around, once, twice, feed the tag end under both loops, pull it tight, slide it into position, keep tensioning it. Obviously the bead will be here and you haul on these as tight as you can. You want these not to pull down as much as possible. You now need to fit the handle. That's the length of tube. It's about 15 to 20 centimeters long. Feed that onto the longer one. comes out the other side, push it up tight against where the bead would now be. Turn the whole system over, repeat again. You would obviously have the second bead in position here as well. Tie a single granny knot, you need obviously sufficient room here to be the same as a normal wishbone. Remember the beads will be in place. By the time you've tied that up, it will be up there. Again, take the loose end of the handle piece, feed it through the knot, pull the knot firm. And again, throw two loops. One, two, obviously trapping the previous two in position. Feed the tag in under it all. Roll these so that you keep tension on the line through the handle. And haul on that and away you go. Simple, easy to make. You don't have to use a double here. You could use two singles. So you have a single here and a single there. Personally, I think these crate drag does slow the spear down to some degree but some people prefer it less hassle and you can't lose this handle. Personally, I much prefer using a load assist on a standard wishbone. Just my opinion. And there you have it. With this more complex wishbone and all the knots, I didn't show how the beads are set in position prior to making the knots. I'm going to do that as a separate section and demonstrate what we do. Firstly, the handle length cut 38 to 40 centimeters. Then the two at 30 
cut them at 60 so that one end is joined. Obviously the two beads are pre-drilled. Feed the handle one into position, remembering the beads must be opposite direction to each other. And now we're going to pull the wishbone pair through all of that with the braid. This is exactly the same as how we made the looped version before. Can be a little fiddly with braid, much easier with trace wire. So there we've got it entering, haul on it, and there it comes through. We slide that through until we have it in position for the second bead. Repeat the same procedure. This one went a little easier. There you have it. Obviously, I should have set the plastic handle in there. Don't forget that, otherwise you'll be redoing it. Simple, easy way to get three dynamos through the beads. We feel it's a good idea to use Dyneema rather than Mono as your shooting line. It seems to be faster through the water and less likely to create any entanglement. Obviously, don't leave your gun loaded with the rubbers on your anchors. Best to keep them off when in storage. As you can see, handle easy to get to. Looks much better and will shoot a lot further than a normal gun of this length. One of the problems customers are having, they feel the rollers tend to shoot a little high. This is quite possibly because of the arc of trajectory. A conventional gun doesn't shoot the spear quite as fast and there will definitely be an arc. At average range, that will generally shoot slightly lower than where it would be pointing at. And uh, with the roller, the spear travels much faster through the water. So traveling from A to B, much less time, much less drop. Obviously gravity, we can't fight against that. That creates the arc. And good luck. Hope you enjoy your roller.